Hey guys, Miss Osuna here. Let's do skin tones with marker. I'm starting with my lightest color on the shadow side and I'm just gonna start filling in. Notice around the neck I left a little bit of white space toward the center. And again, the shadow side is the left side for us. That's just our choice. You can choose either side. But as I fill in on the shadow side, it's going to be darker. And anywhere underneath the bust will be a little bit darker on top will be lighter okay so the arm on the shadow side is thicker and heavier on the left side I'm gonna be leaving a little bit of white space toward the center and I'll take that down a little bit at a time as I continue filling in the elbow to wrist area notice that we have thicker on that left side so more coverage on the left side. Down the torso area, a little bit heavier on that left side under the bust. And then for the hand, the top of the hand toward the left, based on the position here, is going to be darker. Notice I'm leaving white spaces because you want to take those away little by little. So as I go towards the right side of the bust, and the right side of the collarbone area and shoulder area, it will feel slightly lighter as well. Once again, the bust is gonna be darker underneath the bust and it'll be lighter towards the center. Here I am going down the left and right side of the arm on the right of our page. And again, I'm leaving some white space toward the center. We can take that away a little bit at a time as we want. So as I continue filling in with my same marker, I'm just using the same color. It's my lightest color. I'm going to go on down under the hand and underneath the waist in this same manner, just leaving it more covered on the left side, less coverage on the right. As I do the arm on the right side, it's the same thing, leaving a little bit of white in the center and making sure that that left side is a lot darker and the right side a lot lighter. Now we just simply repeat this process. I'm gonna go and darken with the same marker, but I have switched to the fine point side of the marker. This is a Blick Studio marker. The color is Camel. And as I'm darkening, I'm using the lighter fine point side because then that gives me a little more control. I don't want to make it too dark. For the collarbone, I'm just leaving a little bit of white space toward the center there. And I'm darkening above and below it. Continuing on, we are just darkening that shadow side and pull out those details on the right side. You still need an edge on the right side, but the dark side is going to feel more covered. So just repeat this process with your first marker until you have the coverage that you want on the first layer. Then you can move to the second marker, which will be a little darker. Continuing on, remember to not take away all of the white. You just want to take it down a little bit at a time. All right, I'm going to just proceed with more coverage on my shadow side so that my light side feels lighter, like there's a light source. Our light source is on the right, shadow is on the left. And I'm also darkening a bit under the hand because that's casting a shadow. Now I'm going to move to the darker color. And this is a different marker. It's by Copic. And the color is sand. And so I switch right away after I put down that darker I switch back to the lighter one to blend it. So I'm layering these markers. So the switching back and forth is gonna be really important. And you have to switch quickly so that the marker doesn't dry fully. OK, 
Okay, here I go again. I'm switching back. Darker. This is just a little bit darker. Making sure that my shadow side is definitely much more coverage and heavier and darker. And then switch right away to blend it to the lighter color. You just go right on top of the original lines that you've already created with your lighter marker and it'll blend that darker marker. Continuing on, I'm switching to the darker for the bust and then right away, switch your marker. I'm using the fine point side to blend and soften so I don't have a real heavy stripe because we don't want a heavy stripe. Once again, darker and get ready to switch. And you're going on top of what you just colored to blend and blur that line a little bit and push the color around a bit. All right, I'm gonna go darker here on the neck and switch right away to blend and blur those lines. And that darker tone really does blend when you switch right away. Okay, I'm gonna continue down the torso and repeat this process. Switching and blending right away. We don't wanna let it dry. Under the hand is a little bit of a shadow, so I'm going to have my darker and then switch right away and blend it. As I add bits of my dark, I don't want to get rid of all the white, so I wanna be very careful. And I switch right away and just keep blending it blending just by going right on top of the same lines that I've already created with the lighter marker. That's the blending portion. So it takes that light and dark and it makes them blend together. The shadow side of our arm is on the left, even though we're on the right side of the page. So now I'm switching and blending that right away. I'm going to continue to blend that shoulder. You don't really want a hard stripe edge. And notice I'm not outlining the whole entire portion. I am doing section at a time. So there's no outlining taking place. Once again, leaving the white spaces in the center. Now you can take your shiny surface such as metal or plastic and then put the darker one, the whatever darker marker you have, put that and spread it onto your tin. Now take your lighter marker, pick up some of that and blend it. So that lighter marker will give you a nice gradient when you dip it into the darker marker. And I'm on the fine point side of the pen. That'll give a nice gradient for those medium tones. It just takes your blending to the next level. More of the gradient tones because I'm just taking my lighter marker and dipping it into that darker one and blending away. You can go as dark or as light as you want on your croaky for your skin tone. It's a preference choice. There's really no right or wrong that way. I'm 
I'm going to take some of that darker from my tin and use it for my left side once again. And you can literally keep repeating this process over and over and over and over again, but uh, it's going to be up to you where you decide to stop based on how much blending you want, how dark you want, how light you want it. The goal, though, is to have dark, medium, and light. The light source is on the right side of our paper, and the shadow is on the left side of our paper. So for every section of the body, continue that light source is on the right side, shadow side is on the left. All right, I'm just gonna blend a little bit more with my lighter marker to finish and I will be done. In terms of real world situations as a fashion designer, you won't be taking a lot of time to really render your croquis really on the job. You're going to be moving really quickly, so you'll just need a touch of skin and a touch of fabric, etc. A touch of hair, a touch of a face. But in this case, this is teaching you how to render fully so that you understand how to do your portfolio illustrations. That's different from your working sketches. All right, that's it for this tutorial. I will look forward to seeing you next time. Until we meet again, happy sketching.